Thank you so much. Super happy to be here with Sologen. Again, my name is uh, Cameron Stewart, and I've been with Solar Edge for the last six and a half years and in the industry for 17. Man, it's getting up there. 17 years. That's a long time. Uh, so today we're going to demo the Solar Edge Designer. You know, it's a living, breathing tool that we're constantly updating, improving, making it better. And the best part about it is as a Solar Edge customer, you get access to it. Uh, so it comes with our inverters, it comes with our optimizers, it comes with the monitoring portal just to help streamline your business, we offer this tool. So if you haven't used it before, just go to solaredge.com, click the login button, and then click on designer. Now I'm going to run in a beta environment so I can show you some new tools and features that are going to be released very soon. If you're interested in early access to these tools, I would love to hear your feedback. So reach out to the Soligent team if you're interested in trying our uh, financial analysis tool. And it's integrated in the designer. We're gonna go through it. I'll give you a little demo. And if you're interested in early access and providing some feedback to help us improve, uh, I would love to hear it. So just work with your Soligent team and or your regional sales manager for Solar Edge, and we will we will do that. I will note that sometimes when I work in our beta environment, <laughs> I might have to reload or refresh <laughs> because you know it's a it's a beta environment. So just keep that in mind as I'm working through the tool, and I just know that the other version is typically the you know the standard version is much more stable than the one I'm I'm working in because you know it, it's it's a beta. Uh, so that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So as you can see, I just logged into the designer. What should pop up is your project list. And in your project list, um, do, we have a every site that has ever been created um, for your company. And I'm, I'm multitasking here. Sorry, every set that's ever been created. And as a SolarEdge user, I'm gonna turn off my projects. I have access to all of the sites that have ever created by a SolarEdge employee. And as you can see, it's gonna be a global footprint. I'm gonna see sites from all over the world, Italy, Germany, whatever. And <laughs> there we go. Uh, all over the world, Israel, Germany, United States, cool, uh, Spain. So. I always filter by my projects, so I can just look at the projects that are most relevant to me, but anyone in your company, if you use our tool, are going to be able to see the sites that are done for your company. I can, of course, filter by commercial sites or residential, and then I can uh, sort the projects. Maybe I want to look at project name, project size, you know, whatever uh, is most meaningful. Down, if I want to create a new project, I'm going to click this plus button, and I can either start a new residential project, a new commercial project or the basic. And if you're just trying to get, if you're just trying to get some information about which optimizer to use with which solar panel, all you have to do is use the basic version, enter some generic information, uh, the module make, module manufacturer, the address, and then boom, we'll give you optimizer parent. But you and I, the reason we're here today is to do much more than just, uh, just basic. So we're gonna do a residential design. And cool. And we're gonna do an address right here. This is, uh, this is my house. And now you know where I live, so. <laughs> Be nice. <laughs> uh, so as you can see, it, our search engine is populated by Google and Google is going to make the recommendations based on your location. And uh, as you can see, because I live in Roseville, California, it's recommending Roseville as the top number. But if I was searching an address, it would it'd be within my proximity. Uh, going outward. So I'm going to pick that from my drop down list. Now let's say I was, for example, doing this commercial building behind behind my house. And if I were doing that building and the neighboring building, but uh, the uh, pin doesn't quite allow both buildings to be in the blue square, 
I could zoom out a little bit and the blue square defines your draw area. So you can move this pin around to wherever the address is. Uh, we're gonna put it back onto my home, cool. All right, so this is, this is the house that we're gonna design. Uh, enter some information about the customer's name if you wanted to. I don't work for Marriott, that's weird. All right, work for Solar Edge. Uh, I can put in my consumption profile and for consumption, I'm going to list uh, my house uses, I have all gas appliances and my house uses about 8,000 kilowatt hours uh, annually. And for my consumption profile, I'm going to list what I, how I use my energy. And normally, <laughs> pre-COVID, pre-COVID times, I'd be family with uh, school-aged children. Uh, but now I'm a retiree or working from home. So we're all working from home here in California. And so you can see I have a lot more daytime focused consumption. So I'm going to choose that. And I'm going to go with the 240 volt split phase. Fantastic. And then once I click the create button, this pin is locked into place. So you just want to make sure you adjust your blue square, your draw area or your pin before you click create and make sure it's right where you want it in right where you want it, want it dialed in. Wow, I can't talk today. All right, for site modeling, um, for site modeling, we're gonna draw the rooftop of the building that we're gonna put solar on. Now there's no requirement to draw every aspect of the roof. You can choose to do so or not. And again, because I'm running in beta, it's taking a little bit longer than I like. Cool. And you'll probably see me like refresh a bunch of times today just because I'm running in beta. And while we're waiting for that to load, just one second. Okay, so to start, I'm just going to draw the outside edges of the roof. And the draw tool is located up here. Now, as you can see, this photo is kind of granulated and it doesn't look super detailed, but I can get the idea. If you have a drone operator, you can upload a background image. And so that's what I'm gonna do. Click the background image. And I'm gonna go back to pick my file. And now to, to scale the drawing appropriately, you're gonna pick two points uh, that match. And so I'm going to pick the uh, top left-hand corner of my roof there. I'm gonna drop this uh, other pin, this yellow pin on the, I usually like to drop it on something that's more distinguished like the driveway uh, that has less of a 3D aspect to it. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. Okay. Because the, the more you can dial this in, the easier scaling is gonna be. Okay. And I'm gonna click adjust. Oops, it looks like I got a little bit of rotation. No big deal. I'm just gonna go ahead and rotate that back because my, my house faces exactly like uh, the front of it faces south exactly, and uh, my roof pitches are east-west. Okay, and then I'm going to click apply. And now I have a beautiful aerial view. <laughs> Super detailed. Now, the reason we were using those pins is to help scale the drawing. So when we add our solar modules to the rooftop, the drawing is scaled. 
if you know a measurement, you can also scale the drawing to that measurement. And I'll show you how to do that. So for example, I know that this uh, concrete slab right here, I know that's 103 inches, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a line that's hopefully you know more aligned with the slab, cool. And I'm going to say that this line, I'm gonna specify the length and just type in 103 inches. And as you can see, as I zoom in, my slab is a little bit narrower than the 103 inch, eight foot, seven inch line that I drew. So if I want to adjust my background image, I can uh, use this scale function and I can go up or down a little bit. And we can adjust the scale of this drawing. Uh, this image. So, so now I'm at 90. I, I'm going the wrong way. My line's getting bigger. There we go. There we go. So that looks about right. So since I know the length of that concrete slab, now I know that my drawing is perfectly scaled. I'm going to click apply and I'm going to zoom back out. And now we're gonna draw the edges around the rooftop. So now I have a very high degree of confidence that my rooftop is scaled appropriately. So when I add my solar panels, I know that they should fit. So I'm gonna just draw the roof edges and you can see that maybe the drone was flying not directly over the house, but a little bit towards the front, uh, which is why we have kind of this uh, weird, instead of a straight line, it kind of, it's a roof pitch. So I'm going to cut it off on purpose because you really want to draw 90 degree angles as you're drawing your rooftop. All right. And the reason we want these 90 degree angles is it'll make your uh, 3D mode just so much better. Now there's a couple of, of ways to improve your draw speed. Just know that every time I'm ending a point, it's a left click. And if I want to start drawing a new line, I can either double click or I can click on the draw tool. I'm panning using my right mouse button. So if you've ever used AutoCAD or, or any other draw software, uh, it works just like that. And I'm zooming in and out using the uh, scroll wheel of my mouse. If you didn't have those fancy buttons or you forgot, you can just hover over the controls right here and you can do this stuff with your keyboard too. So it'll say to zoom in and out, you can use the up and down arrows. Um, okay. And then I've got this dormer over here that I'm gonna add. And there we go. Cool. And as you can see, I've got some roof fence that I need to uh, include. So I'm just gonna draw some obstacles right there to cover up these roof fence. That's an attic vent. This is a plumbing vent. This is a gas vent, another plumbing vent, another plumbing vent, another gas vent. All right, and I've got this chimney. And the chimney actually does hang halfway outside of, of that roof. Okay, notice how I'm not drawing any of the stuff down here. Uh, I'm not gonna put solar panels on it, so I don't need to draw it. And then lastly, uh, there's a function that I need to talk about. So this is called the split function and I'm gonna hold control and basically anywhere there's uh, lines inside the building that have two different, that have two different uh, inclinations. Uh, I need to split that out. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna enable me, again, I'll show you on the 3D mode. It's gonna enable me to uh, in raise the ridge line. So we're gonna go to 3D mode by clicking the 3D button. And we're just gonna lift, left click and drag and we're gonna raise that ridge line. So now my house is no longer a 2D image, it's a 3D image. You can also increase 
the uh, obstacles that you drew. So those look about right, but these, uh, you know, plumbing vents and gas vents, I think, uh, what is it? Gas vents are like always like two feet or three feet. So I'm gonna type uh, two feet there. Maybe they're always 18 inches. I always forget. They have a, a minimum requirement that they have to do. Cool. And we're gonna call that good. And then for the degree of inclination of the roof, we are going to left click on the roof and I can specify it. So I just left click and dragged and I can do that. As you can see, the degree of inclination is changing. I have a 412 roof or I can type it in 412 and the tool will do it for me. So this is a two story house. I can see that this uh, lower edge is uh, set at nine feet, 10 inches. So I'm gonna left uh, double click on this vertice to select all of the roof edges. And I'm just going to increase the size of the roof because that's actually about 20 feet off the ground. And that's what I'm gonna do. Okay. And I think when I did that, no, it looks good. Okay, cool. Let's make sure my pit, my roof pitch is right. Yeah, I think I changed a little bit. Okay, there we go. Now we're gonna go to PV module placement. And we're gonna add PV modules to the roof. So we're gonna select the roof that we wanna put those PV modules on. And I want it aligned to this edge. So we're gonna click the plus PV module button. And then over here, we're gonna enter our manufacturer. So we're gonna go ahead and, oh man. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and add, I don't know, what do you think? LG, Trina, Hyundai, let's do some LG. So I'm gonna just freehand type LG and see Ele LG Electronics pulls up, fantastic. And then I have a whole bunch of models and you can see like this uh, scroll button would take forever to find all their mo models. So if you can't find the specific model, click this, this uh, bottom option here, can't find your model and you can define it. Uh, I'm gonna freehand maybe a 400 and I see that the R tool has about 400 watt modules with a bifacial gain and then just the neon two. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna click that one. And it's already set my azimuth based on this roof edge and my tilt based on, again, the degree of inclination of the roof. And I can choose whether I want my modules in a portrait or landscape orientation. So because it's tile and you have to use typically rail-based systems for tile roofs, uh, I'm gonna leave it as portrait. I'm gonna include a one inch column spacing and a one inch row spacing. And that just gives me a little extra wiggle room and accounts for mid clips and stuff like that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and close that. And then I just left click and drag and it's gonna automatically populate modules, avoiding the obstacles and fill up the roof to the maximum capability with uh, one swipe. Now we know that we have a three foot walking lane from the ridge line, right? And we have a access walking lane to get to the ridge line. So those are guide points. And so we see that this, uh, this top row with these solar panels might not actually fit. So what if I drop down to maybe some 370s? We can see that the modules automatically scale back because you know it's a scale drawing. And we can see if I if I do 370s, I might be able to get some more modules on this rooftop. So that's what we're gonna do. So I'm going to delete these three modules over here. And we're gonna move those a little bit closer. And I'll tell you why I'm doing that in a minute. Uh, and I'm gonna delete, I'm gonna delete this whole block right here too. Okay, and then I think this block looks pretty good. I think because the shape of this attic vent, if I wanted to, I could get one more landscape in there, but I think that would just look like garbage. So I wouldn't do that as an installer. I wouldn't expect anyone else to do that. So we're gonna leave this block of modules as is. I'm gonna add another block of modules right here and I'm going to tinker. 
All right, so I need to make sure that I'm three feet within that walking lane, cool. And we're just gonna drag some modules over here. And it looks like, okay, so it looks like on this roof facet, I can get 15 modules. All right, so now I'm gonna go to this other side and we're gonna add some more modules. And it should remember everything, but the azimuth changed obviously. And I'm going to just again, drag and drop. And it looks like, you know, if we claim that the three foot walking access is over here, we just need three feet from the ridge line. Cool. And then I should be able to stack some modules you know, fairly tightly into here. Can't quite get three rows, but we can definitely get two rows. Okay. And again, hey, Cameron, we had a couple relevant questions coming up right now. Um, sure. Can you move the vents? Like if you wanted to, if it was something theoretical, could you like set, create a setback on a vent? That's not, yeah. in, okay. How would you do that if it's not exactly there? Yeah, so if you're saying uh, this vent doesn't- uh, Let's pretend like it doesn't exist or it, it actually exists like three feet above. Uh, yeah, so you just go into the drawing, uh, the 2D mode site modeling. And uh, 2D mode is where we draw our obstacles. And we're gonna say that this vent is maybe uh, down by the ridge or right. something like that. Yeah, you just left click cool. and, and drag it. And then when you go back, so the tool automatically saves and it's gonna remember where we moved it. You can see this obstacle is now moved down here, right? This is where it was. Now it's down here. Uh, it didn't affect any of my module placement, but let's say it affected, let's go back to 2D mode and move it kind of into the module and see what happens. The module should highlight red and say you have a invalid module placement because it's getting obstructed by an obstacle. So notice how this uh, module turned red, right? So it, uh, it is saying that this module is invalid because it's obstructed by an obstacle or it's hitting it. Awesome, yeah, that's super helpful. And then one other thing that had been mentioned, um, is it possible to use this tool for a home that has not been built yet? Yeah, so instead of uploading an aerial image uh, like I did, you'd upload maybe a CAD file and you could trace the CAD file. So in the roadmap of items, uh, AutoCAD import and export is on the, in, AutoCAD import and export is on our roadmap. Uh, it's funny, the AutoCAD export is what most residential installers are looking for. Uh, where we can give you the site plan and uh, maybe a single line diagram and stuff like that. And the AutoCAD import is what our commercial designers are looking for. So they can import the, the site plan, the site layout and all the electrical diagrams and stuff like that. So it's a uh, different users want different things, uh, but they are, it's definitely on a roadmap and we'll see it hopefully sometime very soon. Perfect, thank you. Continue mm -hmm. as planned. Okay, cool. Great questions. And, and if you see those coming up, uh, yeah, feel free to just uh, throw them at me and I'll, I'll, I'm happy to answer them. So as you can see on the bottom here, we have our uh, 15 optim our modules on one roof and then it looked like uh, nine on this other one for a total of 24 solar panels. Uh, I think that's a, a fairly conservative design, about eight kilowatts it looks like. So let's go ahead and move along with this design. We're gonna to go to electrical. Now, if you just want to do something quick and easy, the easiest thing is just to use whatever the tool recommends. <laughs> you can say, oh, uh, the tool is recommending a 7600H. Maybe I'm gonna add a battery. So I want the 7600 Energy Hub, so I can add a battery to it and the Power optimizer recommendation will give us uh, optimizers that are only compatible with those solar panels. So the 370, 401, 405, 45, and 505. It will never recommend an optimizer that isn't compatible. Uh, and if it does, you know, and you say solar edge, we tell you later, 
uh, that module is incompatible with this optimizer. You say, no, 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 it was, it was on the design and we stand behind our designer 100%. Oh, I forgot to show you a, a feature. Sorry, let me, let me back up one second. I forgot to show you in PV module placement, we also have an irradiance heat map. And the irradiance heat map just shows you uh, where the shading is gonna be. So if you had like a, this tree was gonna shade the array, we could identify this tree as a shading source and uh, see what the impact on the roof surface would be. Uh, but you can see it kind of around these uh, attic vents that we have defined here. So if we were to stack a solar panel right next to this attic vent, it would see about 50% of the expected energy at that one point in time compared to the rest of the roof. And you can see that it's at 86 on this roof surface and 87 on the, on the west face. Uh, and that's indicative because it's an east-west array. And we know that we lose some irradiance when we face faced modules east and west. Uh, so I'm gonna turn off that and I'm gonna go back to electrical design. Okay, uh, so we're gonna go ahead and move. You can move the inverter if you should so choose. Uh, oh, I forgot to generate, that's why it's not there. So I'm gonna go back to, again, my 7600 energy hub so we can easily see what it looks like to consumption when we add batteries. And if you don't want to worry about how to string the optimizers, you can just click on auto string and let our tool string it for you and then click generate. And you can see the tool actually did a pretty comprehensive design. It did a string of 15, the east face, and a string of nine, the west face. And that's exactly how I probably would have strung it. And let's say the SES is over on this side of the house. So that's where we're gonna mount our inverter. Uh, and then this is a design. This is 100% electrical design that's now done and ready to go. If you want to add batteries, you can click on the inverter button over here, click edit. And then you can say, I wanna add a battery. So let's add an LG Chem Resu 10H. And you can add one or two batteries to a single inverter. Okay, I'm gonna click done. And now uh, we're gonna do the whole thing we've been kind of waiting for and leading up to is this financial analysis. Now, again, uh, if you were to log in today using whatever credentials you have, the financial analysis tool isn't there. And again, if you're interested in previewing it and testing it out and providing feedback, uh, reach out to Solgent, reach out to me, reach out to your regional sales manager, and we will put you on our beta list. I am excited for you to try it. Uh, I'll show you the, the tool and we'll go through it so you can kind of get a preview. So you're the first people in North America to really see it. So congratulations. Happy to have Solgent you know, be our partners here. So for financial parameters, we can define, you know, what our currency is, you know, we're in US, so US dollars make sense, but you know, maybe you're in Canada, do you wanna use Canadian dollars? Uh, cash flow rate, electri electricity price increase, 2% uh, is fairly typical, uh, system degradation. And again, we expect about a percent per year, lifetime of the system, equipment lifetime, so we can change this if we think the equipment's gonna last longer. Uh, any O&M costs that you may need, you know, replacement costs, whatever. These are fairly typical of any financial tool that you've used in the past. Notice how it ported the consumption data from what I specified in the project info tab. Uh, if you wanted to upload interval data, you didn't wanna use just basic like 8,000 kilowatt hours annually. You wanna upload interval data, you can do that. And it's like the green button data or you download it from your uh, utility and just it's an Excel spreadsheet and you just upload the data. Uh, for the incentives, you can put in incentives. Now, Solar Edge is going to have some normal incentives that you typically see. For example, the, the federal tax incentive or the ITC. And here's a preview of what it is. The system owner will receive 26% of the system cost up to $100,000 or whatever it is. And then if you don't see an incentive in our tool, you can add one and we can say, okay, this is a, uh, we can, let's name it. Uh, we're, we're gonna make something fictitious. Actually, let's not, let's do SJ. And you click, can't find your incentive. So it's a California local incentive. 
and the insensitive name we'll we'll call it SGIP, and we'll say it's a uh, we can call it a fixed grant. So we can define, you know, is it a cap at 2,000, 3,000, whatever it is? Is it a cost-based grant? Is it a percentage of the cost of the system? Is it a production-based grant or is it system size-based? So we'll just do a fixed grant for simplicity. And um, we know that SGIP is, uh, man, I forget what step they're at in PG&E territory. Uh, shoot, I can't remember off the, the top of my head. Uh, but we'll say that it's uh, about 3,000 bucks. We'll just call it that. Uh, we don't pay taxes on it. And so this is just going to take $3,000 off of the net cost of the system. And then by checking this box, make this incentive available for other users on my account means that once it's defined for you, it's defined for everybody in your company. So you don't have to keep on doing this every single time. Uh, so I'm not going to click that box because then I'd make it defined for Solar Edge, also all of Solar Edge, uh, and we're going to say, yeah, that looks good. And then for system pricing, uh, this is how we calculate the cost of the system. You can do a fixed price, you know, fifty thousand dollars, whatever. Uh, you can do a price per watt or a price according to the bill of materials, and we'll fill out the bill of materials. So maybe if we're a price per watt, we just do something average 350 per watt the system total right now is going to be 31,000 uh, but maybe you want to do price according to the bill of materials and I'll show you what that looks like so the price according to the bill of materials uh, you obviously just poured in whatever you're buying equipment from Soligent at so if you're buying equipment uh Let's say the inverter maybe is 15. And of course, <laughs> check with Siligent. Don't quote me on any of this pricing because it's just made up. Uh, so maybe you're buying the inverter at 1500 bucks or it's the energy hub. So maybe it is, maybe it is 2000. Oh, my, my daughter's having a hard time. Sorry guys. Uh, and then maybe we're buying P370s at, uh, I don't know, 40 bucks per, per optimizer. The LG Chem, sure, maybe 5,000. And the, the uh, LG Electronics 370 watt modules, what do you think, about uh, 500 per module? And then we can add custom items that didn't appear on our bill of materials. So we can add our balance of system cost. We can say, yeah, that's about 5,000. And we can add some maybe labor and maybe we work out our labor to be on a price per module, and maybe it's uh, maybe it's a uh, fifty bucks uh, per module that is what we charge. Uh, oh, my, my daughter's having a hard time. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and then maybe uh, we also do our racking, <laughs> and our, our racking again per module, and maybe that's uh, uh, maybe that's uh, I don't know five bucks per module. Something like that. Five bucks seems a little low. Let's go ten dollars per month. Okay. So now we see our total material cost down here is twenty six thousand. You know that's not too far off of what we previously defined as a three fifty per watt for our you know cost per watt. Okay. And then lastly, I'm gonna have to move this little bar. Okay. And then where we're gonna get our offset is the energy cost. Now this is like to me, the coolest part about the tool is you can select your utility provider. Uh, so as you can see, it's a huge, whoa, that's a bug, cool. Uh, as you can see, there's a, okay. As you can see, there's a huge drop down list of different utility providers. And I don't know why it's doing that. Okay. Uh, and you could spend your life scrolling through this list to find your utility provider. But let's say it's a Pacific Gas and Electric. And as you can see, as I start typing, it pops right up. So you, one thing I have noted is you have to be careful not to do like PGE. Like we all know what PGE is. Uh, but the, the tool doesn't. So type out Pacific Gas and Electric and it'll pull right up. Then also all the utility rates are in here. And we can see all the different utility rates that PG&E offers. Uh, so it's a TO, TOU rate. We can see agricultural rates. Uh, I think the E1 is the residential service rate. That's kind of the baseline. And then... 
man, look at all those rates. So if you didn't know which rate you, you were on, again, you could start typing it in like, oh, I'm on the E6. Uh, but here's just all of the rates that we've, we've collected and, and got from a, a database. So let's say, I think what's, what's typical, I think it's E6 is the, uh, is the rate that most people are on. And if you didn't know what that rate is, you can click on rate overview. And here's an overview of the rate. So again, it's Pacific Gas and Electric, it's the E6, it's a fixed rate, uh, kilowatt hours per month, and we can see the different TOU windows. So during period one, which looks like it's, you know, from one to 6 p.m. on uh, Monday through Friday, uh, no, all days of the weeks, we, all weekdays, sorry, uh, from May to October, we see that we're going to get charged at 10 cents per kilowatt hour, 10.6 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, oh, I lied to you. The, and it's an increasing rate. So the most it could be is 31 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, if you see a, maybe something that's not correct, if you see something that is not maybe uh, for whatever reason, maybe it, the value three isn't correct, you can left click you can say, oh, this is actually should be four and you can edit this table. Uh, so how to do that is I'm gonna go back, close. You can duplicate. And now we can edit. And so you just like say, oh, this, uh, this window right here should actually be user uh, rate period four. And I'm just gonna left click and highlight and we see that at rate period four, it looks like we're about 12 cents, 12.6 cents per kilowatt hour, uh, but can get up to 37.8 cents per kilowatt hour. And then you just click done and that's how you can edit the tool. So you can change the dates, whatever you want. Uh, but again, we pull this from a national database. So all the rates should be pretty dialed in. If you see some examples that aren't working correctly, feel free to drop me a line. And I'm gonna click cancel because I don't want to, to do it. Oops, cancel, confirm. Okay, so we're gonna say that I'm on pg e E6. And then lastly, finally, we're gonna get to our summary and reports. All right, the summary reports is loading and it is, um, okay. And it can be editable to better fit your needs. So you can upload your company logo here. You can upload your logo. You can change the, I'm surprised the 3D, there it is. You can change how the 3D image is represented. You can go to, I wanna see grid view only. Uh, so my customer looks like I'm doing work and I want a more top-down uh, photo of their house and then just click done. You can change where this image appears in the hierarchy of, of the report. So you can say, oh, I actually want it to show up lower or higher. Uh, so to me, I think a summary of what your the site name, all that, the, your company logo should always be on top. And then maybe the next thing is your financial overview. So if I want to really customize my report, I can say financial overview, I'm just gonna drag this to the top because I want that at the top, then maybe the 3D image and then maybe the system overview, but I don't want the PV modules. I don't need that on my report. I can click apply. I can set this new design as my default. I'm just gonna click apply. And we can see that the financial overview is now on top. So it looks like uh, the net payment after the ITC and the SGIP incentive that we labeled is gonna be about $16,000. Uh, so that present value of the system is 37,000 uh, and the payback period is about, based on our utility rate is about uh, uh, seven and a half years, all right. So let's see why that is, where that's coming from. The simulation results tell us that the uh, system is 8.8 .8 kilowatts DC. It's gonna produce 13 
megawatt hours annually. You know, we have our environmental stuff in here as well. We did 110% DC DC ratio. And then down here, we can see our system production. So the system is going to produce 13.3 megawatt hours. And it's going to charge the battery. And then whatever is left over, based on our user defined user defined power profile, consumption profile, uh, we are going to export six megawatt hours. So we define that the user, me, uses eight megawatt hours a year. Uh, I'm going to offset 6.55 megawatt hours using solar and about two and a half of those megawatt hours is gonna go into my battery and then be used that after the sun sets. Uh, and then I'm going to import 1.45. So it looks like my system is actually oversized for my home, but that's okay because I plan on buying an EV and we know my self-consumption is going to increase because I'm gonna be using much more electricity. So here's a graph of the production versus the annual consumption. Uh, if there was clipping, you'd see a little uh, clipped energy, a little uh, hashed line that shows you the clipped energy. And then again, we can see what my estimated bill savings year one is, maybe what my bill savings year 10 could be. And just leave it at year one for now. And here's the detailed financial analysis report. You can see my level wise cost of energy and you can see my break even point right here at seven and a half years. And then my system just makes me money. So let's go ahead and take out that battery. Uh, sorry, real fast, you can also, change the system loss diagram. Uh, I generally try not to give this to homeowners because they don't understand it. But if you wanted to go into advanced settings here and then say, oh, I have more soiling and snow because I'm in an agricultural area and I'm maybe gonna lose 5% annually over that because of that, you can add those and it'll take 5% of your expected production off the top. Now we'll say that our tool has been third party validated. We're within a percent or two of the Aurora's, the helioscopes, the PV cysts of our world. So it's a very accurate tool. We're not padding our numbers at all, so to speak. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is what it looks like. And then one of the coolest features to me is you can export this to the monitoring portal. So we know how important monitoring is. And when you're monitoring your system, you get that module level data, know before you go monitoring. It takes all the project information, all the site modeling and exports it to the portal and creates a site for you. Uh, so if I wanted to click export, then there would be a, a spot for the Solagent webinar <laughs> uh, site on the monitoring portal. So I'm not gonna do that because it, obviously they don't, if you're not gonna buy a system, they don't have a, a site. So I'm just gonna click cancel. Uh, and then down here, if you if you get stuck or you're having a hard time or you need somebody else outside of your company to take a look at it, you can click the share button. They You can enter their email address. You can set their abilities. They can either just view or they can edit the system. Uh, you can get a shareable link and that way some other person can validate the drawing for you uh, if you were concerned that it may not be correct. So let's go ahead and take out this battery and see what that does. Oh, let me go back to uh, the list view. So now we have created maybe a, uh, a design with a battery. Uh, and now we want to replicate this without a battery. So I'm just gonna click this uh, duplicate button. Let's see if it works. Duplicate, uh, there, uh, there it is, okay. And we'll say Solgen Webinar Sands Battery. So it imported everything. It just duplicated everything. So everything from the site modeling, the PV modules, everything, uh, the financial analysis, everything. So let's go into the electrical design and we're gonna take out that battery. And we're gonna leave it, I think we're gonna leave it as an energy hub inverter. So that way we can just say, yes, this person is ready for a battery and maybe a battery upgrade, uh, but they're just not ready to purchase the battery yet. So we're just gonna remove the battery. So click on the inverter, 
click the edit button and we're going to say i lied to you i want you to select no batteries click done and then that means on the financial analysis that we don't get the s chip incentive so we're going to delete this s chip incentive and then we're going to see my summary reports And maybe now that we don't have a battery, maybe the system really is just way oversized. You can see that there's an error, a notification error that's saying, hey, you have an energy hub inverter, but you didn't attach a battery to it. So that's just a warning. If it was a design flaw, you'd see like a red X that says, hey, the modules are flying off your roof or <laughs> something. Uh, you didn't string it correctly. So we can see that uh, my consumption didn't change, but my self-consumption totally did change. So my self-consumption, I think, went from six megawatt hours to three megawatt hours because I no longer am storing excess energy in the battery. I am now exporting more of this energy. So we can see that hey, this system is now way oversized for what it should be uh, based on the annual consumption. And maybe when we come back, we'll just add more solar to the roof when we add that battery. Uh, I'm always in favor of putting as much PV on the roof as you can, but that's just a me thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove some of these modules. Maybe we can right size the system a little bit better because in, in theory, the, uh, they're way over, way over producing for, I'm just going to delete that block of modules. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, I should have deleted this block of modules. Control Z un undoes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, we'll just delete this top row and then we'll move this over here. And look at that, 11 modules. Okay, so the electrical design is going to be wonky now. I think it might have deleted our string. Nope. It automatically adjusted it for you. How cool is that? Uh, but it kept the inverter, kept the 7600. And again, we're going to leave the 7600 with the thought of when we come back, we're going to add some more solar panels and we're going to add a battery. Uh, but what I want to get to is the summary and reports. Okay, so in the summary reports, now our production is down to 10 megawatt hours annually. I'm purchasing or consuming eight megawatt hours. Now this system is definitely more right-sized. Uh, my self-consumption didn't change a whole lot, uh, but I'm exporting a lot less of this energy to the grid. Uh, so if we have net metering, this is fine. I'm exporting six, I'm importing four. So my net gain is about two megawatt hours annually at the end of the year. Uh, of, of credit. And we can see that my cost went way down. Again, uh, now my current monthly bill might be $213. And I think, I think I put that at the top. Yeah. Net payment is 15,000 because again, we just reduced our, our solar panels by so much, even though we got rid of the S chip incentive, we reduced our solar panels by quite a bit. Uh, and my payback period actually increased. So my payback period went to 11 and a half years. And the reason it's doing that is the tool is not accurately representing the, I think it's not accurate, accurately representing the amount, the, the net metering. So if you were curious about that, let's go back to financial analysis. Oops, yeah, financial analysis. Let's get, look at the rate overview. And we can see the export rate is fixed and that, that's, that's exactly what happened. Uh, it's saying that I'm not getting any money for, for energy that is exported. So again, I could go back to duplicate and edit this, this rate and say, oh, I do get a one-to-one -one ratio uh, for net metered. And so we could enter that and you'd see that payback period uh, start to fail or excuse me, well, start to decrease. You'd see the payback period start to decrease. But uh, that's, man, that's the tool. Thank you so much, Cameron. We do have a lot of, of questions still rolling in. Um, a couple from a little bit earlier is, how do you determine shading from a tree? 
Yeah. Okay. So that is also a roadmap item of okay. more accurately representing what tree shading looks like, but I'm going to show you how I do it. Uh, so let's say this tree is actually maybe in here uh, and you'll have to excuse the stuff in my, <laughs> my lawn. I was cleaning the garage this day. So that stuff all over the place. Uh, but what I do is I just make a giant obstacle and we'll say this tree is right here. And when we go to 3D mode, we can identify a height of that tree. And we can say, oh, this tree is like uh, 60 feet in the air because it's a giant pine tree. Uh, cool. And then when we go to PV module placement and we look at our radiance map, uh, now you can start to see the shading effects from that tree. So you can see closer to the edge of this roof, you know, we get about 70% uh, of the production and actually you don't get out of the shade until about here, until about midway. So this solid block is not a very accurate representation of what a tree, because a, a tree shade would look like because there is light that passes through the tree, right? Uh, so that is a roadmap item and we'll have a more functional tree tool. Uh, but for right now, if you were to design today, I would use uh, an obstacle like that. Awesome, thank you. And I, for the, I know the financial analysis is still in testing, but will there be an option for financing rather than just cash purchases? Uh, yes, so that won't be in the initial launch. Uh, so if you're doing like a third party financing and you need to add some interest on top of the payments or something, Yes, that is definitely on the roadmap. So it won't be on the initial launch. We'll do mostly cash, cash business, but I think you might be able to structure it in a way that it looks like uh, it's a, a third-party finance. Let me think about that for a little one, uh, for a little bit. Let me get back to you on that one. That one's how I would do that. Let me think about that. Right, I'll get back to you. I'll get I'll get an answer for you. Sure. No problem. <laughs> and there are a few people that have like, if you want to be doing um, zero export or energy arbitrage um, or those kinds of like rate shifting tactics, is that something that can be considered too? Yeah. Um, so again, this is a time of use rate, right? So the, as it stands right now, the tool won't, um, let me go back to our battery to find one. The tool won't let me, uh, say, hey, I'm going to do time of use arbitrage and set the battery to only discharge during a time of use window. Not yet, uh, but that is definitely something. And congruently, what we're trying to work on is if you select a battery, we want to recommend a rate structure for the battery. Like, oh, if you select a battery, you should do a time of use arbitrage that affects this TOU window based on the rate you, you selected. So that is in the works. And again, beta environment. So we'll get there, uh, but uh, not quite yet. So we want to recommend a mode of operation for battery uh, that will reduce the, the, the cost of the system the most. Awesome, thank you. Is there any way to model a ground mount? Yeah. Uh, so let's just actually go back to site modeling. We'll say that the street is going to be our ground mount array. Uh, so what I do for ground mount is I, I, I draw a box and I just put the box on the ground so I can add solar panels to it. So we're going to define an area of which we can put solar panels. And then we'll, uh, I'll show you how to, how to mount, how to do the ground mount. And I'm sorry for all the, all the loading times. Okay, so I'm just gonna, again, draw a big rectangle out here. We're gonna say, oh, my ground mount array is 22 feet by 60 feet. Cool. And then when I go to PV module placement, I'm going to select the box, okay? And then I'm gonna add my PV modules. And this is where this is where it looks uh, where you need to adjust. So we're going to do a tilted racking system and we're going to face it due south because that's the best production. Now the frame size tells us how many modules 
uh, we're going to put into the uh, onto the array. So if we're doing like a like an Iron Ridge uh, Schedule 40 pipe ground mount array, sometimes you put like two or or three modules or even four in landscape. Maybe you do two in portrait. So we're going to do four in landscape, and then the height defines the height of the modules off of the ground. So they're not going to go all the way down to the ground. So we'll say that those are actually like uh, uh, 15 inches off the ground. Cool. Uh, and then column spacing is going to be just the difference between the modules. Row spacing will be the difference between multiple uh, racks. So if you're doing maybe two racks, uh, how far apart are those racks going to be? So we'll start with this for now, and then I'll show you what it looks like when we add another one. So that's what it looks like. And when we go into, um, uh, if we go into 3D mode, we can actually see, yeah. So we set modeling. We should be able to see the tilt of that. No, it's in our reports. I lied to you. And the tool is going to give me an error because I have unassigned <laughs> solar panels. <laughs> You don't have an inverter, <laughs> edit image. And I'm just gonna drag this. Oh, we can see some height off of the, uh, I forgot to change that. So now you can see how the modules look on the 3D space, right? Uh, and, but look, I, I forgot to show you one step. So I drew a box and the tool thinks I'm drawing a building, a flat roof building. So I'm gonna go back to site modeling. And then you just select uh, select the roof edges. Okay, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm in uh, 2D mode, sorry. Select the roof edges. And then again, I'm going to drop it down to the ground. And there's a, uh, uh, oops. If you didn't get the tool all the way, or the roof surface all the way flat. There's this button that's just flattens everything. Uh, okay, so that now puts my ground mount array on on the ground. Okay, and then if you had, I want to show you what it looks like. Maybe if you did two racks that were, um, uh, let's go down to two, and we're gonna change those to portrait. And I want to add, actually, let's go back to the landscape so I can just add it. And then we're going to say that they're actually, you know, uh, 48 inches apart, something like that. Uh, so that would be four feet, right? So do that. And it's going to know that four feet is the distance between those two racking systems. I'm going to go to summary and reports so we can see what that looks like now. And it's super windy here still. And we can see now that there's two different arrays. They shouldn't be shading each other, but if they were, I could see the irradiance. And I should be able to tell if they're shading each other and they're not. So we're good. That's Great. what it looks like. Thank you so much, Kevin. We still have a few questions in, but we will have those saved so we can reach out to anyone who's asked a question that hasn't been addressed. But this demo was really, really awesome. We have a lot of people who have expressed interest in being beta testers, which is really exciting. So we will um, get them on that list um, as soon and get that over to you, Cameron. Cool, right on. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys, you know, having me here, letting me talk and show you this amazing tool. And I, I can't tell you enough that if you're buying Solar Edge product, you get access to this. There's there's no fees. You can have as many users as you want that work for your company. It's it's just a it's included with our product. So I think it it is a very powerful tool that for some reason in North America we underutilize it. In the rest of the world, like so many people use our tool, Europe, Australia, everywhere around the world they use it except for North America. And I, I just don't know why because it's so powerful and it's it's comes included it's free it comes included with the product so amazing thank you so much